whatever you do, uh, make sure you watch this video all the way through the end. I got some news. First off, a big shout out to New View Hunting. They have uh, a phenomenal product line this year that I'm excited to show you guys the clothing and the other products that they have sent me. So a review coming up for new view hunting for sure. Now this week I was out hunting with Ray Latiman and Ray and I talked before the hunt. He knew that I was into making videos and he actually saw one or two of them before we went into the country. So he was he was going to let me get the cameras and everything rolling before he before he took his shot and, and try to call the moose in as close as we can. And anyways, you'll you'll see through the course of this video what actually went down. The first group of hunters heading out into the country for a week of tent hunting in a remote location. Soon, we'll be doing the same. Getting ready to go in for uh, another week of hunting moose. And uh, this is coming with me this week. And his name is Ray. Ray, what's your last name? Latiman. Latiman, from Michigan. From Michigan, the great state of Michigan. There you go. And we're from the great province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Looking forward to going after the elusive bull moose <laughs> in Newfoundland. Do you know where we're going? I have a good idea. Okay. We're gonna fly back in the bush and helicopter's gonna drop us off and we're gonna have a wonderful tent camp. Do you know what the area's called? Uh, no, no, no. They named it Charlie's Hole. Boy, Charlie's Hole. <laughs> We're going in Charlie's Boy, Hole. Boy, the boys back home would love that. <laughs> There's a little cubby hole, and hopefully we can get a moose into it. After a short wait, it was our turn to head out onto the land for a week of hunting moose. I truly enjoy flying in a helicopter over the land. We have such a scenic province. But the land is in trouble. It's bone dry. The driest I've seen it in my lifetime out there. Rivers hardly flowing. Bog holes dried up. The land needs serious people to care for its future. For our future. As we were setting up the tent, we had a visitor. A nice doe woodland caribou. We seen a few does, but no stags, during our time in this area. Male caribou come in. We were setting the tent up, and she came within 15 yards of us and stopped for a little break and turned around and decided to go in the reverse direction. Yeah, I bet you if we were to face it off, I'd say that's 15 yards or 12. Yeah, might even be 12. It was, it was pretty close. Walked right on top of us and didn't even bother that we were here. There she goes. About an hour later, we heard a cow bellowing. But this is very rugged land, hard to walk in. What did we just hear? We heard a nice cow there talking in estrus. She talked to Mo maybe three, four times. So we're gonna go take a little lunch break. Head up to a little knoll, see if we can pull them out tonight. Maybe we can get lucky.
on our first evening there, we seen another doe caribou and one moose over two kilometers away. On the next couple of days, we heard a number of cows roaming the countryside, actively searching for a mate. What's happening, Ray? Oh, not a whole lot. Just listening to the cows talk. Seeing a couple of caribou. We're getting cows over here. The next morning, we hiked three hours north. Three hours to cover 2.5 kilometers. When I say it was bad walking, it was bad. Waist high tuckamores and shrubs to push through. Glacier deposit rocks stacked on top of each other, making holes and crevices all over the place. But once we hit the bog leads, we made up some good time. We had seen four cows uh, mulling around in this one area. And then this other animal came in very aggressive. We could see the heads and ears uh, through the binoculars. I could see them quite well. And I didn't see any antlers on this other animal. So I, I believed right from the get-go that it wasn't a bull, that it was a dominant cow that was putting a run on all these other cows that were there in the area. However, Ray was convinced because the way it was acting that it, it was a bull but i think it was a cow that was an estrus the dominant cow and she was making sure that no other cow got near her bull i've seen this happen many times in the moose woods Today we planned on uh, going back three hours north of uh, camp again. Hiking three hours north out of Charlie's Hole to get up to uh, to an area where we seen those five cows and I believe there, there would have been a, a decent bull up there. Anyway, we decided to go to the lookout first and to do a few calls. And as soon as we got to the lookout, I, I gave a couple of calls. And uh, as soon as I did, Ray thought he heard a bull grunt back right away. So we hunkered down and we decided, okay, we're gonna gotta wait this out for a few minutes. And as we did, I, I gave a few a few more calls. We eventually heard a cow in estrus working away along the mountain. About uh, she was probably about two thirds of the way up, and she was working uh, from south to north head into the wind it was a north wind that morning she was heading into the wind and we got to talking and, and the bull that ray thought he heard or actually heard might have been talking with the cow all night long and, and we did not know you know because this was first thing in the morning so maybe they were en route to uh, intersect each other so we decided you know, we can't push through there because it was so thick, so hard going. We were walking in Tuckamores that were, you know, waist and chest high. We were glacier deposit boulders on top of each other all over the place that was just dropped there and left there by the glaciers. So there was big cracks and crevices in between these rocks, big holes. You really had to watch every footstep and you had to push your way through a lot of this uh, um, shrubs and and and, and tuckamores and it, it was it was not good going it was hard on your pants hard on your boots it was hard on everything hard on the on the body so we hunkered down in place just to see what would unfold and i gave another series of uh, estrus calls and that's when i thought i heard a bull grunt back three to four times you know i heard Bruh. But 
I doubted myself because Ray seemed to be hearing things better than what I was. Now I know I'm hard of hearing in, in one ear, very hard of hearing. I'm supposed to be wearing a uh, hearing aid in, that, in my left ear there. But I, I know what a bull sounds like and I was sure I had heard a bull but began to doubt myself because I said, Ray, did you not hear that? And he said, no. I said, I think it grunted, you know, at least three, four times. And because um, you're moving around, it was a little bit far. Anyways, we decided to wait there a little bit longer now on top of this lookout. The wind was starting to pick up. And uh, I was given a, a few more series of calls. And if I threw out a, a few estrus calls, the, the, the cow that was working her way from south to north, she would get upset and, and she would bellow back. I mean, she was wanting to mate. I think she was an estrus. It seemed to me that there was uh, a lot more cows there than bulls and uh, that they were right in the, in the middle of all uh, their timing was they they hit estrus all around the exact same time you know and they didn't have enough suitable suitors for them out there but anyway um lo and behold we waited there for a little bit and i gave a few more calls wasn't sure the wind had picked up the wind was blowing past your ear so you couldn't really tell if there was any moose there and then i i was glassing around looking south of us, downwind of us, and there was a bull. Now we had pre-arranged this uh, little bog that the, he was in, the, the far end of the bog. The far end of the bog was uh, about 260 yards. So we knew, you know, it was just shy 260, probably about 250 for his first shot. And Ray was supposed to let me get the, uh, get the camera rolling, but anyways, you'll see what happened. And uh, it turned out that I, I did, in fact, hear that bull from the west of us. And he actually even made a little wallow before he stepped out on that, that little bog. On the, there was a bog below. He, he had to go up a bench, up through some tucks. And, and it was only a short little uh, jaunt up through some tucks, maybe uh, 10, 12 yards. And then he broke out on another bog. And uh, that's where we got him. So anyway, I hope you enjoy. Have the camera going. First, don't hit him. Hey, we oh, stayed. That's right. right, brother, we stayed. <sighs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Get yourself a bull. Joy forever, eh? Hey? Yeah, that worked out real good, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Okay, Ray, uh, state your full name, who you are, where you're from, and what are you doing here? Oh. Well, I'm here from Michigan. It's Ray Ladiman. And I drove all this way just to visit with Charlie for the day. And we decided to go out and do a little moose hunting here in Newfoundland. And we went up on this beautiful little rock over here behind us, about 265 yards away. And we had a little visit from our little buddy here. We got one side broke off, but he was a mainframe six. Right. Maybe a seven point, six, seven. Most importantly, we've got a very good table fare here. Very, very good. So and tell everybody what you say about Newfoundland moose and, and how well, well they're, they... They're good eating. I mean, they're tough to beat. You're going to get good eating moose if they're eating good. So what were you here for? For a trophy or for meat? No meat. He's a meat hunter. I'm a meat hunter. First. Old school. Remember what I always say? Four six point bull is my trophy. Well, Ray is one and the same. No problem. But now we got to get some uh, work done here. And uh, we might as well get at it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can get right at it. So who are you hunting with? I'm hunting with Charlie and uh, Greg Sam's outfitting. Great 
Great Land Adventures here up in Newfoundland out of Deer Lake. Grand Lake Adventures. Grand Lake. We got to do this. Okay, one. yeah. All right, Ray, who are you hunting with? Well, I'm hunting here with Charlie, wonderful man that guides for Grand Lake Adventures out of Deer Lake, uh, Newfoundland. Up yeah. here in the wild bushes outside the Grand Lake. How many bulls did we see for sure? We seen two bulls for sure. We seen one well, for sure. One for sure, but we think the other one might have been based on the the posture of the body and the way they were uh, cows were running. Yeah. But we didn't see no horn. Yesterday we hiked about three hours north of here. Uh, still come up short on, on them, but we know there was a bull there. We heard him grunting. We heard him going through the trees, but he was with four cows. Four cows. This is the most cows I've seen searching for for bull. Um, really, I, I, I've never seen that many cows actively wandering, searching for a bull. Right? Yeah. And great table fare. Yeah. So we got we got to get busy now. Chopper's coming this afternoon, and we got to be ready for it. Correct the mundo. Good job, Let's buddy. Let's get at it. Thank you. What a heartbreaking turnout for a meat hunter. We thought we had him what was a perfect meat bull. A little four to six point bull is absolutely the best tasting meat you're going to get out there. And he got that. A nice six point bull. But it was full of parasites. You can see those little whitey cells. The wildlife biologist said it was tapeworm. And this was the worst case he had ever seen. Everywhere we cut, the worms were into the meat. The neck, the back straps, the tenderloins, the ribs, the, the front shoulders, the hind legs. Everywhere we put a knife, the meat was infected. What a heartbreak. So, Ray, all packed up now. Getting ready to head out, just waiting for the chopper. Ready? What do you think? Ready to depart. Have a nice little ride over the beautiful province of Newfoundland with a nice moose and pack and pick it up with the chopper and we'll head back to base. Wonderful time with Charlie here. <laughs> <laughs> and we managed to get a moose in this morning. Right. 8.30. Was that what time he came in? 8.30 this morning. Yeah, he didn't take long once... Uh... Once we seen the moose and identified the moose to uh, uh, take care of business. Right. Yeah. Right. Good job, buddy. Thanks, man. Appreciate all the help. Yeah. No problem. Now it's time to fly out. We got all our, the tent is all packed up, all our gear is aboard, and the moose is aboard as well. On the way to see the wildlife biologist. When you're walking on short yellow grass, you can make good time. But when you're walking through the Tuckamores, it was a hard go. We had walked all the way up. You can see right there, just to the right of the pilot, there's a yellow lead, bog lead at the end of the mountain. And we walked up there. And right here, you're going to see three moose two cows, and a bull. And that's, that wraps up another week of hunting here. Take, take a look at the, the brook. Absolutely no water in the brook. So my final news is uh, now I, I'm actually done guiding for this year, I, I tweaked my back. I hurt my back. I went to the chiropractor. He made a couple of really good adjustments on my back and my neck. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to err on the side of caution. And in the interim, I'm throwing my name in the hat for vice chief of, uh, or for western vice chief of Halapu First Nations. I think it's uh, time somebody with a lot of land base and traditional knowledge gets into a position 
who truly cares about the environment, our ecosystems, nature, and, and Mother Earth. We have to protect. Newfoundland has gone through two years of drought and, and, there, and there's a big push and a big partnership for uh, for the wind and energy and, and, and that will take up a lot, a lot of water. Where's the water coming gone from? Our trees have turned brown before they turn yellow. Flying into the country, you'll see the the water levels or and the bog conditions and stuff. Caribou moss crumbling underneath your feet, as hard as a rock. You can sit down anywhere just with a pair of jeans on and not get wet. You know, you don't have to have the rain pants or, or waterproof clothing. I've never seen our island this dry and this vulnerable. So that is why I'm gonna throw my uh, name in, in the hat and, and for the running of the Western Vice Chief because I think I could be uh, a voice of reason. I know I know uh, there's only one voice, but I think they need somebody in council with that kind of mindset. The mindset to look after Mother Earth and what we have for the next seven generations. I think too many people are far concerned about the green in the pocket versus the green on the land. And we can't take care of our people if we don't have a home for our people. So if that's the kind of person you want in council for Halapu, you can uh, think of me on on election day when it's time to cast your vote because uh, I don't like what I see that's going on. I don't like the way they're thinking and I think it's time for a change and I think it's uh, if we don't do act now, it's going to be too late.